even being aware of all my limitations, it was pure magic, and I believe they were happy in the brief moment. USA just released fully functioning female robots. USA remains at the forefront of all things robot and technology. Let's take a peek at the latest happenings in the American robot sphere. Tiny fish-shaped robot to pick microplastics. Microplastics are found nearly everywhere on Earth and can be harmful to animals if they're ingested. But it's hard to remove such tiny particles from the environment, especially once they settle into nooks and crannies at the bottom of waterways. Now, researchers in ACS's NanoLetters have created a light-activated fish robot that swims around quickly, picking up and removing microplastics from the environment. Because microplastics can fall into cracks and crevices, they've been hard to remove from aquatic environments. One solution that's been proposed is using small, flexible, and self-propelled robots to reach these pollutants and clean them up. But the traditional materials used for soft robots are hydrogels and elastomers, and they can be damaged easily in aquatic environments. Another material called Mother of Pearl, also known as knacker, is strong and flexible, and is found on the inside surface of clamshells. Nacre layers have a microscopic gradient, going from one side with lots of calcium carbonate mineral polymer composites to the other side with mostly a silk protein filler. Inspired by this natural substance, Xincheng Zhang and colleagues wanted to try a similar type of gradient structure to create a durable and bendable material for soft robots. The team ended up forming a tiny fish robot that was 15 millimeters, or about half an inch long. Rapidly turning a near-infrared light laser on and off at a fish's tail caused it to flap, propelling the robot forward. The robot could move 2.67 body lengths per second, a speed that's faster than previously reported for other soft-swimming robots, and that is about the same speed as active phytoplankton moving in water. The researchers showed that the swimming fish robot could repeatedly absorb nearby polystyrene microplastics and transport them elsewhere. The material could also heal itself after being cut, still maintaining its ability to adsorb microplastics. Recipe for Improving Autonomous Robotic Systems Autonomous robots have come a long way since the fastidious Roomba. In recent years, artificially intelligent systems have been deployed in self-driving cars, last-mile food delivery, restaurant service, patient screening, hospital cleaning, meal prep, building security, and warehouse packing. Each of these robotic systems is a product of an ad hoc design process specific to that particular system. In designing an autonomous robot, engineers must run countless trial and error simulations, often informed by intuition. These simulations are tailored to a particular robot's components and tasks in order to tune and optimize its performance. In some respects, designing an autonomous robot today is like baking a cake from scratch, with no recipe or prepared mix to ensure a successful outcome. Now, MIT engineers have developed a general design tool for roboticists to use as a sort of automated recipe for success. The team has devised an optimization code that can be applied to simulations of virtually any autonomous robotic system and can be used to automatically identify how and where to tweak a system to improve a robot's performance. The team showed that the tool was able to quickly improve the performance of two very different autonomous systems, one in which a robot navigated a path between two obstacles, and another in which a pair of robots worked together to move a heavy box. The researchers hope the new General Purpose Optimizer can help to speed up the development of a wide range of autonomous systems, from walking robots and self-driving vehicles to soft and dexterous robots and teams of collaborative robots. Robots turn racist with flawed AI. A robot operating with a popular internet-based artificial intelligence system consistently gravitates to men over women, white people over people of color, and jumps to conclusions about people's jobs after a glance at their face. The work, led by Johns Hopkins University, Georgia Institute of Technology, and University of Washington researchers, is believed to be the first to show that robots loaded with an accepted and widely used model operate with significant gender and racial biases. The work is set to be presented and published at the 2022 Conference on Fairness, Accountability, and Transparency. The robot has learned toxic stereotypes through these flawed neural network models, said author Andrew Hunt, a postdoctoral fellow at Georgia Tech who co-conducted the work as a PhD student working in John Hopkins Computational Interaction and Robotics Laboratory. Robotic lightning bugs take flight. 
Fireflies that light up dusky backyards on warm summer evenings use their luminescence for communication, to attract a mate, ward off predators, or lure prey. These glimmering bugs also sparked the inspiration of scientists at MIT. Taking a cue from nature, they built electroluminescent soft artificial muscles for flying insect-scale robots. The tiny artificial muscles that control the robot's wings emit colored light during flight. This electroluminescence could enable the robots to communicate with each other. If sent on a search and rescue mission into a collapsed building, for instance, a robot that finds survivors could use lights to signal others and call for help. The ability to emit light also brings these microscale robots, which weigh barely more than a paperclip, one step closer to flying on their own outside the lab. These robots are so lightweight that they can't carry sensors, so researchers must track them using bulky infrared cameras that don't work well outdoors. Now they've shown that they can track the robots precisely using the light they emit and just three smartphone cameras. If you think of large-scale robots, they can communicate using a lot of different tools. Bluetooth, wireless, all those sorts of things. But for a tiny, power-constrained robot, we are forced to think about new modes of communication. This is a major step toward flying these robots in outdoor environments where we don't have a well-tuned, state-of-the-art motion tracking system. Humans help robots find their way. Just like us, robots can't see through walls. Sometimes they need a little help to get where they're going. Engineers at Rice University have developed a method that allows humans to help robots see their environments and carry out tasks. The strategy, called Bayesian Learning in the Dark, or BLIND for short, is a novel solution to the long-standing problem of motion planning for robots that work in environments where not everything is clearly visible all the time. The algorithm developed primarily by Quintero Peña and Chasmas keeps a human in the loop to augment robot perception and, importantly, prevent the execution of unsafe motion, according to the study. To do so, they combined Bayesian inverse reinforcement learning, by which a system learns from continually updated information and experience, with established motion planning techniques to assist robots that have high degrees of freedom, that is, a lot of moving parts. To test blind, the Rice Lab directed a fetch robot, an articulated arm with seven joints, to grab a small cylinder from a table and move it to another. But in doing so, it had to move past a barrier. If you have more joints, instructions to use the robot are complicated, Quintero Peña said. If you're directing a human, you can just say, lift up your hand. But a robot's programmers have to be specific about the movement of each joint at each point in its trajectory, especially when obstacles block the machine's view of its target. Rather than programming a trajectory up front, Blind inserts a human mid-process to refine the choreographed options, or best guesses, suggested by the robot's algorithm. These labels appear as connected green dots that represent possible paths. As Blind steps from dot to dot, the human approves or rejects each movement to refine the path, avoiding obstacles as efficiently as possible. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time!